Good afternoon, everybody. Um, I also had some issues, technical problems. Very grateful to John to uh, speak before me. And uh, I wanted to thank Michael Lardner in particular, of course, here as well, uh, because he suggests um, the idea of um, <clears throat> talking about the Marx Revival. The Marx Revival was published in the middle of the pandemic in June 2020, and uh, it was impossible to launch the book and to do all the many conferences and book launches that were um, organized at the time. Um, likely the book is having a wonderful and successful life with many translations around the globe. And uh, the chapter uh, on ecology written by John is one of the most discussed and interesting. So I'm very happy to report good news about our research, despite the very difficult time that we have been through. So um, when we worked on this book, and uh, perhaps also the one that we have discussed um, last time, the Rethinking Alternative with Marx, also with uh, Michael Lardner and many other colleagues, the idea was to go move a step forward the <clears throat> reading of Marx, the revival of Marx in 2008. So the idea that Marx is useful to understand capitalist crisis, but not good for his political analysis. This old idea that comes from Schumpeter and the division between Marx the philosopher, Marx the economist, Marx the political scientist. So I see three new elements for my generation or for even the younger scholars of Marx that are trying, that are starting now to write new books and new contribution. The first one is, of course, we have been discussing this, the break from Marxist Leninism. The second one is this revolution in Marxist studies that has begun once again with the publication of MEGA, the new critical historical edition of Marx, thanks to which we can read many um, manuscripts of Marx that were not known and published before. We can we have access to Marx's own notebooks so we can see what Marx was doing and uh, the many things that he would have done had he had more time to continue his research. And then also, I don't know, the letters that he received, the learning process, not only Marx and Engels letters, but read the entire correspondence. And also we read in a different ways, um, manuscripts that were presented to us last, uh, like books. I will return to this later in relation to, to communism. There are also many recent and innovative interpretations. John Bellamy Foster was mentioning this point at the end of his talk. So in the chapters of the Marx revival, we have tried to return to old categories of Marx and uh, update the readers in a new way. So using also this uh, philological discoveries and new materials, and also to introduce Marx, um, and the examples are many, I'm gonna focus on this soon, to topics that are usually less um, related to this author, but these are actually topic on which Marx wrote a lot. Not perhaps in the books that he published, but in the manuscripts that he wrote and in the notebooks of research that he put together more than 200 between 1838 and 1882. So thanks to this, I believe that we can have Marx to help us to understand the contradictions of capital society, capitalist society on a global scale, much more than readers of Marx were available in the past. And also that's very important beyond the conflict between capital and labor. It is of course central, but there is not only that in Marx, like many readings in vogue today in um, um, North American University, they tried to present Marx like <clears throat> a scholar who was all interested in the economy and um, belonged to the past and not able to provide <clears throat> critical tools to understand other contradictions of all our society. So I would say that thanks to these publications of new materials and new research related to this, perhaps we can consider Marx like the classic of, um, I don't know, political, economical, philosophical thought, 
whose profile has changed most in the 21st century? Because really there are many new materials and many new ways of reading Marx and surely to consider Marx in a very different way from the dogmatic, the economicistic, the Eurocentric author that was presented to us for a long time and still presented to us in some circles today. So, um, this <clears throat> Marx revival, this rethinking alternatives with Marx <clears throat> is something that as ecology at the core, I would like to say something about this later, but John has already covered the most important things, but to make other examples, Marx wrote a lot of migration, for example. Marx showed that the force movement of labor generated by capitalism was a major component of bourgeois experience. And he insists on the class solidarity among workers, or solidarity regardless of the origins of workers or any other distinctions. Marx wrote a lot about um, non-European societies. And of course, his um, view was always very strong against colonialism, against the destructive role of colonialism. And from this point of view, we can no longer read Marx. Think, for example, the um, understanding of the role of uh, British colonialism in India, or in many other parts of the world, we can no longer read Marx just with, uh, for example, the um, articles published in the newspaper in the early 1850s in the New York Daily Tribune, where Marx was a very important correspondent, but actually we can read many notes made by the late Marx on India, on uh, the presence of French colonialists in Algeria, uh, Spanish in Mexico and Central America, and there is, as I said, always a very strong critique of colonialism. And in particular, if you want to return to this very famous question, India, uh, Marx wrote that British had only been able to, I quote, destroy indigenous agriculture and double the number and intensities of famines. So for Marx, capitalism is not bringing any progress, any emancipation, but is actually bringing robbery of natural resources, environmental devastation, and new forms of slavery and human dependency. The interesting things in this Marx that I read, in particular in the last decades, like from the end of the first international 1872, when Marx returned to history and started, expanded, I would say, his research to new area and new disciplines, for example, ethnology, anthropology, and Marx is reading Kowalewski, and Marx is using the very interesting uh, contribution of this author, for example, as I mentioned before, against French colonialism in Algeria. Well, Marx is also clearly against the idea that we can explain phenomenon using European categories. So Marx warned against those who homologated phenomenon that were instinct, for example, <clears throat> understanding India, trying to explain India with the category of the critique of feudalism and middle age in, in Europe. Um, and my time, you know, I have to move forward very quickly, but there are many other issues, many other topics that were completely underestimated or even ignored in Marx. Among them, there is the role of individual freedom in the economic and political sphere, gender emancipation, the critique of nationalism, and the, fo the forms of collective property, but not controlled by the states, that is an important part of his research at the end of his life. So the interesting things for me, I could continue with more examples, is, is that all these topics are essential for our contemporary political agenda. And um, uh, if we read this Marx, in particular the late years, we can find many useful, interesting things. So I'm suggesting, and this is the proposal, this is the idea of the Marx revival, to read Marx a la Marx, to read Marx in a critical manner, to update Marx analysis, um, and uh, of course, to um, understand that it is not true that everything on Marx has been already said and written, and there is the need of a new generation of readers of Marx and interpreters of Marx. From my point of view, now that this new evidence, these new materials are available, we can read Marx not only for the assertion that he provided in the books that he published, 
but also for the doubts, for the questions that he asked himself in the notebooks, in this um, um, research that uh, he did and that he could not complete, um, not only about capital, but about many other topics. Um, in the few minutes that I have um, left, I would like to uh, specify a little bit more the idea of, uh, of, of communism, because in this uh, discontinuity with the, you know, uh, past reading of Marx with some of the readings of Marx of the past, well, also the reflection on Marx on communist society, in my opinion, should, can be re-examined and we can find many interesting things. Unfortunately, I have to omit the first half of my, of my chapter, <clears throat> the ideas included in the first half of my chapter on the early socialism against this um, category of utopian uh, socialism. Uh, but I would like to focus on a problem that I see in the um, um, a significant part of the literature of Marx, the idea of returning to young Marx and to consider the young Marx as the place, the author, where you can find the most interesting ideas elaborated by Marx. This is a mistake that has been done in the past, particularly by philosophers in relation to many concepts, many ideas, alienation, just to make an example. But if we return to the young Marx for the idea of communism, we will make a mistake because actually, while some formulations are fascinating, I believe that this has very little to offer. And I will call this uh, philosophical communism like many other scholars have done, including uh, Ben Said. So if we read, for example, the economic philosophical manuscript of 1844. Well, Marx is describing communism as the negation of the negation, the moment of the Hegelian dialectic, the positive expression of the annulled private property, communism as a fully developed naturalism and the fully developed humanism equal naturalism uh, between objectification and self-confirmation, between freedom and necessity, between the individual and the species. In some of this formulation, we can find you know, the thought of a, a scholar, of a, a student who is very young at the time, just 26 years old, and also some formulation very close to the philosophy of history of Hegel. A mistake that has been done many times has been the, um, describing the ideas of Marx about communist society in relation to the German ideology. You remember this using many, many times this uh, quotation, um, um, from the German ideology, I would like to read it in the communist society. Um, society regulates the general production and thus makes it possible for me to do one thing today and another tomorrow, to hunt in the morning, fish in the afternoon, criticize after dinner, just as I have in mind, without even becoming hunter, fisherman, or critic, etc. Now we know, thanks to the new edition of the German ideology, that actually some of this formulation were written by Engels and Marx was just adding words like criticize after dinner or critic to make fun of this, to criticize this. So to show to Engels that these were um, ideas associated to Fourier that were, uh, that uh, needed to be um, uh, overcome. So where do we find Marx ideas, Marx elaboration, the most interesting things about communism, about post-capitalist society, as we say today, and what characteristic do they have? So I will say that we find this in three different typologies of writing. The first one is the critique of order socialism. The two texts that I mentioned so far, the EPM of 1844, the German ideology, are an example of that. And an example of that is also the manifesto of the Communist Party, in particular, the very well-known section uh, in which Marx criticized other socialism, but also the Grundrisse, the Urtext, the critique of the political economy, the first book that Marx published, the first books of political economy in 1859, or for example, the ideas against La Salle included in the critique of the Gotha program, or the um, many letters in which you can read very interesting things that Marx used to write to political activists at the time against La Salle, against Proudhon, against the false brother, um, against, as he used to call them, 
um, and against the uh, anarchists um, who were fighting against him in the International Association, um, Working Men Association. The second categories are the political writings, the writings um, in which Marx wrote uh, for the uh, political organization at the time, right? That they were asking to Marx um, ideas and um, I don't know, uh, concrete political programs. The manifesto is one of them, you know, um, but the most important part of this is all the corpus written by Marx between 1864 and 1872 as the main leader of the international the civil war in France, of course, of 1871, and also the very interesting notes, very short, but very beautiful, uh, of 1880, in which Marx wanted to help, through which Marx wanted to help the socialists, the newborn uh, socialist workers party in France to build, to put together their uh, political program. And the final category are the capital and not the preparatory manuscript of capital. We know that this means 15 volumes now in the second section of Mega 2. There are many important things there because when Marx is criticizing capitalism many times in his um, um, manuscripts, in particular, not only there, he's also continuing and sometimes writing wonderful description about main goals or main characteristic of. Um, communist society. So all these ideas, all these uh, writings, all these different pieces that I am collecting now in uh, an anthology that will be published uh, next year, help differentiate Marx with many experiences of um, actually existing socialism of the 20th century. And Marx annotation on communists are not to be evaluated, of course, as a Marxist model to which we should dogmatic adhere or a solution according to which Marx, you know, we should apply in different times and different places. Marx was extremely clear once again at the end of his life, uh, particularly with the debate on, uh, on Russia, but not only that. And um, despite the difficulties that many of these um, writings uh, have for us, the fact that they are fragmentary and uncompleted and some of this must be um, interpreted because we know also through letters that Marx later changed some of his ideas, for example, the Communist Manifesto published in 1848, this passage just constitute, in my opinion, a conspicuous and extremely valuable treasure for us today to rethink alternative to capitalism. So I will um, Continue now with, uh, uh, and you know, going to the end of my uh, presentation, with uh, the um, idea that uh, if we do this, that I tried to say at the beginning, so I'm not reading only the critique of capitalism uh, of Marx, but also these political writings, we can see that then Marx is very useful not only to understand the way capitalism works, but also to identify the reason for the failure of social experiences to date. And I will just leave three topics to the debate, two elements related to, to Marx's conception of socialism that you can also find in my uh, chapter. The first one is the collective property and leisure time. So in Marx Capital, um, in Capital, Marx wrote clearly that is only interested capital, I'm quoting, is all interested in the maximum exploitation of labor power, just as a greedy farmer gets increased revenue from the soil by robbing his fertility. So to overturn the state of affair for Marx, it is not enough, as we know, to change the redistribution of consumer goods. We have to change the productive structure of the society. And this is today more urgent than ever. And according to Marx, the goal of the proletarian struggle must be to return them to the community. So the realization of a fundamental aim of communism is the reduction of the working time and the consequent increase in the capacities. That's why I mentioned leisure time at the beginning in terms of creative gifts and enjoyment of the individual. Marx's model is nothing at all 
related to the generalized misery, but is a, a society in which there is a greater collective wealth and satisfaction of needs. The second indispensable element indicated before me so well is of course ecology. I love when Marx observed in Capital that the private ownership of the globe by individuals will appear as absurd as that of one human being by another. So in Marx, there is a manifested most critical critique of the idea of the destructive ownership inherent in capitalism and uh, pointing out, once again, I'm reading a quotation, even a world society, a nation, or even all the society for a single epoch taken together do not own earth. Marx says this wonderful quotation, we should be Bonnie Patres Familia, we should give the earth in a better way to successive generation. And the third element, very important for me, is freedom. The idea that communism means a society in which there is a full and free, develop of free development of every individual. And we have to do as much uh, um, political work on this, even more than you know, theoretical analysis, because the word freedom, this word, this category, this slogan has been in the end of right wing parties. And uh, today there are even in Europe many new uh, um, neo-fascist party, and they are called, even in Scandinavia, they are associated with the word freedom because Marx socialism has been associated for um, a long time with this idea of dictatorship of the proletariat that actually was you know, used in an instrumental way, misquoted very often and not in the way that Marx had indicated. So we are trying to uh, reorganize an agenda for alternative to capitalism. We know that it's very urgent today. And uh, we reread the past for, first of all, understand the reason for our defeat, but also to rediscover theories and forms of political organization that are useful for the present. So of course, I'm not saying that the left should use Marx and should redefine his uh, political agenda and program according to what Marx wrote 150 years ago. Marx himself changed it after a few months, a few years, even volume one of Capital. But I am strongly convinced that the left uh, must not make the mistake of forgetting the clarity of the analysis of Marx and not use the critical weapons that they offer us to rethink in a new way, in a new way, how to build an alternative society to capitalism. Many thanks for your attention.